I have been on the road for 71 days. Today, we're gonna check out all the projects because the Grizzly and Shades have been working the whole time I've been gone. We're gonna check out all the projects we've got going, the Elvis Jet, and uh, I received a few packages from some of you that I'm really curious as to what they are because one is gigantic. We're gonna open that up. So let's, let's get into this. Grizzly! What's up? 71 days since I've been gone. You look, you're looking good, my friend. Thank you. So uh, Grizzly, I apologize emphatically. The words you spoke over the RV 100% came true. I was ready to burn that stupid <laughs> thing to the ground by the time we got back. Not kidding, every single day I was working on the RV. Every single day of the 71 days I was gone. And it's still broken. There's still stuff that's broken. So anybody out there, there's a perfectly good used RV, uh, no problems whatsoever, only driven to church on Sunday by grandma, uh, willing to trade for just about anything at this point. <laughs> you got a boat that's sunk at the bottom of the ocean? I might take you up on that. <laughs> that would be nice. So anyway, so you, you've you been busy since we've been gone. Yeah, I've been working on the 310 and working on the Elvis Jet project while you were gone. Yeah, so the 310 is in this hangar now. We had it in that hangar and we had the blue tarp special in this hangar, so we, you, pan, un, took the panels off for inspection, and then we're like, oh crap, we're way behind, so we, you had to put the panels back on for inspection, welcome right. to Jimmy's world, and then move that outside so we can move this inside because uh, we still have quite a bit of work to do on it before we fly this thing again. Yes. All right, boss, Take show me what we got. Okay. We got oil line. Oh, the exhaust is off because we had the crack there. By the way, on the other 310s and I was looking at them, all of them had the exact same problem. Every every single one of them that I looked at did. So uh, we have an oil line that's taken off. Yes, it's been removed. Okay, it's supposed to connect back there and it comes in and goes over there. We were thinking that that was the location of a pretty good size oil leak. Yes. And was it? Um, it's hard do to we, tell right do now we know? until we put it back together. That's a good looking airplane though. I've missed you. All right, so this is the old line that's been on there for who knows how. Oh, there's a tag right there. We can clean that off. That'll tell us. It still is fairly flexible though, isn't it? Mm. I mean. Yeah, but not really. Yeah, okay. I mean, overall it doesn't look too terribly bad. Yep. And this is the other side. Doesn't look bad, it's just covered in oil. Yeah, again, it doesn't look too bad, honestly. But we figured while we had everything off, go ahead and get it get it done because this thing is leaking and dripping oil all right uh let's see oh yeah blue tape we got to torque the bolt that's under there because we replaced the bearing that was in there we've got a fuel leak i think on this tank over here there's a fitting that goes into it that we got to check and I think that's where the fuel leak is coming from so we got to take care of that. What else is on the squawk list for this thing? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> well, the exhaust has to be sent out for repair. Oh, that's right. Do you where is that exhaust? And that's we can It's over here in the box. So this is the exhaust that we got from BAS. Okay, this is a good one. Yep. So that this tab right here is is the issue on the other one. Yep, that's the one that's getting replaced. And here is the one that's getting sent out. Okay, it's all what, up. so this one's getting replaced because if you look right there, there's a hole in the bottom of my exhaust, which ironically has probably been this way for 20 years, if, if I'm honest. And the other one that we had was just cracked right here. Isn't that correct? Correct. Yeah, so it, it just needs to be welded up and then we should be good. But because it's aviation, we can't just weld it. It has to go to a special person that does special welding, things like that. Okay, so uh, oil lines, exhaust. What's the other major stuff that we um, gotta do? I think that's it for the engines, putting it all back together, obviously. And then- uh, Oh, and the motor mounts. The motor mounts, that's Oh correct. my Lord. Which we still haven't gotten. Yeah. We've got two. We got two out of eight because these right here, you can see it's a little, little donut-y, kind of squishy, a little more squishy than we'd like to see. Yeah, those are uh, unobtainium. They're only used on this model of engine. And do you want to know how many of these airplanes are still flying? Like five, probably. And all five of them that are flying have busted motor mounts. And I found two on eBay that are at least 30 years old. I think we may just have to uh, just find some that are close 
that'll work because they don't make those parts anymore. They did have them on some other airplanes with similar engines, but they're not exactly the same. So that may be what we end up doing to make sure this, uh, we, we can get it going back together the way it should be. This side was bad enough that- Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, it finally came out. Here, look at that. Oh yeah, that is gnarly. And uh, that tape's on there to hold these little washers on there so that when we put the cone on, it measures up. Um, what else? I do you believe there's, we got to free up the emergency window still. Oh, yeah. We never did figure out how that thing opens. We got to pull the panel off. That's this back window back here. It's supposed to be the emergency window, but, you know, realistically, if it's an emergency, go out that door over there. Otherwise, you're going to have to crawl through that window right there. Because we, we tried pulling on the little cord to open the window and yeah, no bueno. That did not even try to open. So now we have to take all the panels off. We gotta take all that stuff off on the inside, figure out what is stuck, unstuck it so that that window can open in an emergency. Great. Hold on a second. I gotta get a stool for this. Step ladder. Okay, this was a very, very important one. So if we look way down in there, you see that right there? That sucker is rusty. And uh, I'm not a fan of that, if I'm honest, because that holds the uh, yoke and the ailerons, and if that thing was to break, well, let's just say I'd be on another YouTube channel. And I don't want to be on another YouTube channel. I like Jimmy's World channel. So, and, and also, totally unobtainium. Those little clips are like not existent for the last 50 years so we're still trying to figure out what to do there if you got any ideas throw in the comment section and let me know here's a little thing you're supposed to pull for the emergency window but nothing you're going down with the ship on this one i think we need some uh seat covers some interior that's the pass or the uh the pilot seat the driver's seat there that looks like blue jeans yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure that is, actually. Yeah, look at that. That's some old Levi's or something. I mean, these might actually be worth something, but you know, it's to say that it, it could use an update is an understatement. But it matches the whole rat rod vibe we got going on. What do you think? Should we try to find some seat covers? Let's see what we can do to spruce up the old girl. Wow, Grizz, you've been busy over here. Hopefully we'll get this thing flying pretty soon here because a few things we got left to do and get this girl back in the air. I can't wait. Uh, let's go check out the uh, the blue tarp special. All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. There she is. It looks exactly the same <laughs> as it did. What's the note in the window? Oh, that's all. That's my handwriting. Yeah, start inboard. This was my process that I went through on the ferry flight switch to outboard uh, cruise one hour and then the landing that's what was supposed to happen but it started stuttering really bad and i had to switch early and it was sketchy as crap i had to cruise the 7500 feet 21 inches of manifold at 2350 gave me my 65 percent power because that engine over there needed to be uh, broken in because it was new so i had to keep it at least 65 percent power climb 24 squared because it's 24 inches 2400 rpm at 130 miles an hour uh rotate at 80. this was my there you go even the camera on the tail under where the battery pack glide in case it all went south <laughs> gear yeah vsc blue and red so there you go this was my own little like cheat sheet for flying this thing on the way back and unfortunately not, we haven't had a chance to touch it. We've been so busy working on the, the 310 Silver Bullet and the Elvis Jet that this thing right here was pretty much put together. Needs the annual finished up on it. We were able to ferry it down and it's got a couple squawks, but honestly, it's kind of solid. It's good it to is. go. Just the rigging and you know, a handful of other things. Ooh, fuel leak came back. Well, okay, and there was a fuel leak on the wing under here. Yeah, but as long as you don't pop off the tanks, they're... <laughs> yeah, just don't top the tanks off. That one doesn't leak. It came, was it this one that it was coming out of? Yeah. Yeah. So we would have blue like over there, but around it. And you can see some of the purple right there and down there. 
So that's our, you just don't top the tank off and it, and it doesn't leak. That's fine. This side, yeah, that one is fine. Oh, topping this tank off makes it leak down there. Yeah, that's true. Cause, and this one was the other one that leaks from the connection between this tank and this tank. We had a leak right out of here as well on this joint. Not that kind of a joint, but you know. This is a cool airplane. The big surprising thing to me, the speed on this. Because Aztecs are known as being just slow like pickup trucks, 175 not true. I could not believe it. It's the same speed as the 310. And this will get off of the ground in half the distance and carry more weight than the 310. And it's got a pointier nose. <laughs> and that's 200 miles an hour. That's ridiculous. Normally these only go about 175 miles an hour, give or take but this one will get with it. Speaking of going fast, the Lance Air, I think the front tire was replaced and that one, shh, it should be flyable. I believe so. Yeah, let's go check that out. All right. Oh, there's my little rocket ship. I love you. Here's the deal with this one and the one from the museum with the winglets on it. I have some bad news. Well, good bad news. The good news is I'm not selling this one. Bad news is I couldn't get the other one. And you wanna know why? Here's something interesting. The file that I found ended up being the reason I can't get that airplane. Isn't that silly? Because there was a document when the family donated it to the museum that said the Evergreen Museum is not allowed to sell it and it will never fly again. That's ridiculous. Really? And I've talked to the son of the, the other Lance Air that I, from the museum, and he, even he was like, he'd really love to see that airplane fly again. But because that agreement was there, we would have to get the whole family that donated it to sign off on a thing saying that, yes, they give Evergreen permission to sell it to me, and they give me permission to fly it again. So put in the comments, say, please, send that note over to Jimmy so he can buy it and get it flying again. Please, 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 because that one was an awesome and unbelievably good build. There is some differences, and here's why I was willing to go with the other airplane versus this one, and most of the reason is up front under the hood right there. So you see on this one, we're trying to make it the world's fastest uh, four-cylinder, two-seater airplane, that kind of thing, however, we ran into one major, major issue that is not fixable. It, you can only solve it by changing out the entire engine because the crankshaft that is in this engine is limited to the horsepower it can produce for two reasons. One is it's a solid crankshaft and on airplanes it needs to be have some oil passages go through it to control a propeller because that's how the propeller is controlled with oil pressure through the crankshaft. We cannot do that, so that limits us to what propeller we can put on it. The other thing that limits us is this crankshaft is a, again, it's a solid crankshaft, but the counterweights in the crankshaft that keep the vibrations down, it's solid. And what we need is one that has like little counterweights inside the crankshaft itself, and it's called a counterweighted crankshaft and it makes the vibrations a lot less. Basically, if we tried to make any more power, it would vibrate and destroy itself. So that's, that's the issue we're running into. And a new engine for one of these suckers is like $70,000. It's no joke, 50 to $70,000, depending on how much power you want to put to it. And then you add in the price of the propeller at roughly 7,500 bucks. I mean, I can, frankly, I can just go out and buy a whole nother airplane for that cost. And, probably end up with the engine. And the other Lance Air from Evergreen Museum already had a beefed up engine in it. Now it did not have the counterweighted one, but the Glass Air did. And you guys know, same situation with the Glass Air. I discovered that it was a close family member friend of the founder of Evergreen that donated that airplane and they would go to the museum all the time and see the airplane and so then they were like oh okay now we can't sell it because we didn't realize there was a personal connection with the glass air so i'm just out all the way around so hey but this is still a pretty fantastic airplane still gets with it so i think we're just gonna spruce this one up a little bit maybe uh, i learned some stuff from the other lance air 
Maybe we can uh, work some magic with this one. What do you guys think? Put in the comments, let me know what you guys think we should do to this Lancer. I have to throw in the towel because I don't have the finances, frankly, to uh, justify a crazy big new engine and propeller and all the stuff that goes into that. Plus, we're wanting to upgrade the avionics inside, so it's eh, kind of there. Speaking of broke, I think we got the Elvis jet. You've been working your tail off over there. That's where you've been spending all your time. Yep. That is fantastic. Uh, let's let's head over there first. I need to, on our way over there, I'm gonna stop for gas. You gonna ride with me? Yeah. Okay, let's stop for gas and we'll go get it. We were talking about taking this one out. You've never been in it, have you? No, I don't think Can you even fit in this thing? Maybe possible. I, I think you can because you're, what, six foot tall? Yes. And you're not, you're not big. You're looking slim and fit. I'm digging it. 240-ish. Oh, okay, that's, that's a husky feller. Go sit, see if you can fit in this thing. Black, yeah, step on the black step only. Yeah, now you sit on the back back here. Okay, and now you put the uh, plane on like a pair of pants. Can your knees get under there? Yes. Can your shoulders fit in there? Here, I'm gonna climb in. Let's see what it's gonna be like with both of us in this thing. Oh, I've only been on this side once. How's that? Oh, yeah. It's very cozy. cozy. <laughs> it's cozy, isn't it? Well, at least I don't have to worry about, like, bouncing up. Well, that's true. Because my head... Why is that? You shouldn't... I'm, I'm the same height. My head doesn't hit over there. What? You're more legs. I'm more body. Oh, your torso. Yeah. Oh, there. Yeah, that... <laughs> Yeah, look at that. There's a look at the difference. There's a solid like inch difference there, isn't it? Yeah. Huh. You know what? We should plan on Taco Tuesday. Let's do it. Yes. I've not done a taco. We tried a Taco Tuesday. You've never been to a Taco Tuesday? No. Remember we left late. And yes, Bubba Coos burritos, six percent off using the Upside app. Holla! Use my code Jimmy's World. Save yourself twenty-five cents off your first fill up, and uh, go get yourself something to eat. And for Bubba Coos. You scan the receipt, and you're good to go. Done. The size of that quesadilla, man. Chicken, what is it, bacon something? Chicken, bacon, sriracha ranch. That looks amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> Readable. Man, it's been a while since I've done this. Look, there's cobwebs in there. Golly. All right. One really great thing I love about Upside is they don't sell your information. No, they don't make money by your information. They make money like a coupon. So they partner up with places like Circle K and they go to them and they say, hey, you wanna give a discount to your customers? We'll bring some customers. They say, yes. They save a little bit. I get some cash back out of the deal and Circle K gets some customers. It's a win-win, win all the way around. It's one of the highest rated apps there is, 4.8 on the App Store. Listen, if you haven't used Upside, you need to do it. You're buying gas anyway, and they do more than just gas. We're going over to Bubba Q's across the street where we get 6% back off our burrito for lunch. It's a bonus, bonus, bonus. There's a Mustang next to us. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Student driver, huh? <laughs> That's fantastic. That thing sounds pretty good. That's healthy. He's definitely burning some gas. He probably needs Upside App more than anybody with as much gas as he's sucking down in that thing. So, if you haven't already, download the free Upside App. Use the code Jimmy's World. Save yourself 25%. Yes. That's fantastic. To get started, download the free Upside app, use my promo code Jimmy's World, and get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. I believe I'm about to do this. Uh, this is not for me, this is for Grizzly because of his new found health junk. Well, in order to keep the balance in the world, we have to do that. Yeah, that, that balances it out. Gross. And yes, I'm getting cash back from the Upside app with this too. Bonus! 
the first time in my life I've ever spent my own money on a Diet Mountain Dew. I had to make things right in the world with the Code Red, though. <laughs> that one's mine. Do you... What does it taste like? It tastes like Diet Mountain Dew. With the funky aftertaste and everything? Not really a funky aftertaste. Not like every other diet thing? No. no you should try it. No. Look at... Oh, that is... That is wrong on so many levels. But hey, we saved another 6% by buying stuff inside. Woo! Upside app. Download it today. Save 25 cents off your first tank of gas by using my code Jimmy's World. Let's go check out an Elvis jet. Let's go. We're here at the top secret Elvis jet location. Grizzly's been hard at work and I have not seen any of this and he was telling me a few things. It looks dramatically different and I think we're gonna be pretty close to being able to take the airplane and put it on the chassis. Here we go. All right. Holy moly. Yeah, the last time I was here, there was the trays over there. Wow, it's cleaned up in here too. Like the floors are swept. We got new shocks. You've taken all the brackets off that held the body of it on. This used to be the driving platform up here. Oh, and he said he uh, found some generator explosion stuff in there. Eh, we'll, we'll just not ignore that, that's fine. Oh, this is from the Elvis jet? Yeah, and some little bit of hydraulic fluid mixed in there. Oh, because we got that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what, what'd you find on the generator? You found exploded stuff. Yep. Oh. Yep, there's supposed to be magnets right there and there and there. Well, that's a few magnets short of a generator. Did it explode the uh, stator too, or is that still okay, or uh, do we know? We don't know. We'll have to check it. I imagine they probably come as a set. Kind of fell on the ground, but here's some more. <laughs> we can just take some super glue and glue that back together. There's some more. It was a very quiet diesel, so quiet that it wouldn't even run. Holy moly. That coming on here. I'm starting to be able to see it now. I'm, I'm getting excited. We've got new airbags. This is for the chassis itself. We're gonna go ahead and replace the airbags. You can see he's already replaced the shocks. Do all this while the airplane is not on it. Get all that maintenance out of the way. Walk, walk me through, Grizzly. What, uh, I mean, we see the new shocks. We got air baggage there. Yes. So we'll need to lift it up and. Yeah, we got the jack. That's the reason why I left the jacking points on there. We, yep, left those on there for now. Once the airbags and suspension is done, those will get deleted. Transmission service. Basically an oil change, filter change on the uh, transmission. We already did that on the engine, so that was already fresh. It's got new filters on it. Yeah, and then the, the, the fight to get everything apart was fun. Yeah, because I guess all these bolts were rusted. So we need... He had to use the blue torch. We need more. The blue wrench. <laughs> yeah. We finally get to use half-inch drive stuff. Yes. I had to actually go buy half-inch drive stuff. <laughs> Ooh, that's fancy. Yeah. Wow. So the plan is finish up with the airbag swaps and get all the maintenance stuff on this. While you're doing that, I am gonna be trying to fabricate brackets that are gonna connect with this main spar here onto right there. And I haven't quite figured out. Uh, I ended up deciding we're not gonna use airbags on the frame here because we have airbags down there, so the ride is still gonna be okay. And I think less is better. So we're gonna use rubber vibration dampener mounts to mount onto this, to then mount that to it. Honestly though, it should be pretty straightforward. Yeah. Make the bracket here that's gonna to attach to the spar back here. And then up front, I think we are gonna to have to move the air tanks right here, because we did some measuring. These are the air tanks for the, uh, the chassis here. I think we're gonna to have to move those because that's right where the nose gear is. And we're just gonna modify the nose gear and use that as the mounting point for up front since the airplane is already made to take all the stress there. I think just, just keep it simple. Sounds like a good plan. That is exciting. Are, you, are we getting a vision? Are you starting to see it? I've been seeing it. 
Yeah, you've been saying, yeah, because I mean the front end is totally gone now. I was worried about this because there's a line right there. And according to some of the highway people, they consider this up here like extra and not part of the truck because it can be taken off and it's just like a accessory or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that line was what I was concerned with and where the bumper would go. But now that I see how much further the chassis comes in front of it, it comes almost to that line. And I think it's gonna work out fantastic. It's gonna sit right there. I think we're gonna to have to uh, put some support braces in here, maybe some X braces or something in here so it doesn't twist as much. So pretty much it's gonna just line right up right here. The bathroom wall is somewhere in this neighborhood here, which is right where the engine is, so it goes up anyways. And then look, the radiator is gonna sit right where it's cut out anyways, and then we're just gonna take some uh, sheet metal or something and make a bulb on the back of it to enclose everything. We're gonna put our AC units back there. We're gonna keep the generator, so the generator will power the air conditioning units, and we'll be able to use the original vents and uh, system inside for that. And all the water stuff, all that is gonna stay the same. We won't have to touch any of that. The inside is gonna stay exactly the same. Oh, the steering, that was the that was the, the big thing. So we have, this is your steering yoke right here, and if you look, it lines up almost, we did some the math and the measurements, and this shaft is gonna have to sit ever so slightly angled like that. And then kinda come up with a U-joint, and then it'll go over again to be able to use for the steering wheel. I, I think we are gonna have to cut out the yoke section on the, the pilot side, the captain side, but we'll leave everything else in there. So the steering angle is gonna come up like this. We got the steering column over there that I think we can still use. We'll get rid of the yoke on the captain's side. We'll keep the seat, keep all the other stuff. The gauges, BAS has rocked it out and they're getting us a whole bunch of stuff to put in the, uh, the panel to fill up all that. And then for the controlling of this, it's just one screen, like a little iPad basically, will give us all the stuff we need to be able to drive speedometer and everything else that we need. And uh, Grizzly did keep the old one there just in case, but I'm thinking we can find a iPad type deal and be able to plug into the harness on this and that should give us a little smoother integration. Oh, hey, I got a gift from one of you that is for the Elvis jet. Let me go get that. As you guys saw from the other video from BAS, they got us these and it looks like a match. Pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. Let's see if they fit. Oh, come on. Dude. <gasps> okay, this is for real like Scrooge McDuck level. Look at this. Oh, look. <laughs> that is fantastic. Hey, Grizzly. Yeah. I, uh... Bestow to you the golden Elvis chalice <laughs> for your years of hard work. I, I I dub thy Sir Grizzly worthy of the worthy of the sil the golden chalice. I will cherish it forever. <laughs> <laughs> so oh yeah, we got the cigarette lighter that was or the ashtray uh, thing that was missing from that side. Is there anything else missing? We got another ashtray missing from here from both of them. Quite a few of them actually. One, two, three, four, five. That really makes a huge difference. Like that one little touch. Yeah. I am amazed. So I've had a, a couple things. One, one, I'll be honest, in pure Jimmy's World fashion, totally left this here for the giveaway. You saw that the other guy won the 1935 tag. So I'm going to extend it through the holidays, through Christmas. You can get the coolest, the best Christmas gift on the planet is an actual piece of this Elvis Presley private jet cut into that and a chance to win this beacon that came off of this jet. And yes, it works. And I'm going to be putting it and making a box that it goes in so you can set it on your desk or something like that with a little switch to be able to turn on and go... Go to save3ten.com. Go buy yourself an Elvis tag. Buy a fan of Elvis, one of the or airplane in general, and have the best Christmas gift 
ever. And right now we're doing free shipping all around the world. So no matter where you're at, you can get one for there. So I received this, there's a label from Milsec in Ohio. And he said, Jimmy, we need you to take care of this airplane and all the wood that's in here, it's really dried. And I guess he has a company that that's what they do is furniture polish. So he sent us a bunch, stainless steel cleaner, furniture polish, wood cleaner. What's that one? More wood cleaner. Cause yeah, it, this whole thing needs it. And leather and vinyl conditioner and cleaner. So we're gonna be using that. Oh, he just said the Milsec team. So thank you for sending me that. Go check them out. Go to uh, milsec.com, M-I-L-S-E-K.com. Check them out. I'm gonna give these things a shot. We'll see how they work and uh, hopefully bring some of this wood back to life a little bit. Thank you for that. Now there's a big thing. I don't really know what it is. So I got this and it, it was pretty awesome. Check that out. Hi, Jimmy. His name is Brandon. I love your videos so much. I'm eight and my grandpa owns a Cessna 150 and I've been aviation enthusiast since I was three. Me and my grandpa fly out of Warwick Airport in Warwick and that's the in New York. Love, Brandon. Wow, that's fantastic. I'm so glad that I can help inspire and bring a smile into all of us aviation enthusiasts and crazy people out there. This is why I do it. It's pretty special. All right, we got Elvis, King of Rock, and Can I Get a Clear Prop? If I Can Dream, another Elvis song, Jailhouse Rock. Hunk a hunk a burning love. Fever. Okay, here we go. If you do want to send me something, uh, just send it straight to the airport where it's at. And that's 4007 Airport Road. I'll put it on the screen right now. All right, there's that from Paul uh, in Florida. So Paul in Florida, Paul T, we got your, your package. What in the world? What is it? <laughs> no way, there's something else in there. Come on. It's the king. How stinking cool is that? Thank you, Paul. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty freaking awesome. I think that's the coolest thing we've gotten for the Elvis shit so far. A hundred percent. You've had a long flight. There you go. Oh, uh, it's nap time for Elvis. Nap time for Elvis. And again, go to save3310.com, get your own Elvis tag, a piece of this history. We are going to be finishing this in time to take it on tour next year. So keep an eye out for it at Oshkosh 2024. Oh, and yes, there's one more surprise for you. I forgot to mention RJ Iguana's number 23. He bought the number 23 tag and it's gonna go right there on that wall. And that was 100% tax deductible, charitable donation to Wings of Compassion where we help veterans through aviation. So thank you so much. Go support them by their hot sauce. I'm not a hot sauce person, but I tried this and it's delicious. Now Grizzly here is a hot sauce guy. And so there you are, my friend. That is some of the best hot sauce that I've had. Check them out, go buy their stuff, support them. They're supporting this crazy project. And uh, yeah, we have serial numbers one through nine are going to get to name one of the seats that are on there, have their name up there forever. And then serial numbers 10 through 99 are gonna be on the board there. And yeah, I'll shoot, I'll sell it and I'll plug your product or whatever you got. Cause it goes to a charitable cause. I don't get one penny of it. And I think I've identified our first recipient to help them with their private pilot's license. Veteran, great guy. Ironically, the GI Bill does not cover a private license, but it does cover everything after that. And the private license is the most expensive one. So there you go, that's why we do this. So a hunk a hunk of burning love, he's here to welcome you into the Elvis jet. I, I haven't, that's not the surprise. This is the surprise. It's this. This is Jeff with Renault North American. He makes some of the craziest, coolest custom sunglasses. You see what he's sporting right there? You may look, maybe we can find a picture to put up right now of Elvis wearing very, very similar, maybe even the same sunglasses, but he's got something special. I see a box or a bag in your hand. What, what do we got? Yes, so we've got a pair of Indianapolis 500 sunglasses for you. Okay. There's a few different designs. Why we are here today is for the Elvis range of sunglasses. 
we have the ability of putting some of the uh, memorabilia in the glasses lens. What, what's the story behind that? So Indianapolis 500, as you know, is the famous racetrack. And what we were able to ascertain is a brick from the brickyard. We have a patented pulverizing process. So we pulverize the brick down into a fine powder and we insert it into the emblem in the glass. Okay, so you're telling me that in this emblem right here is part of the brick from the in Indianapolis, Indianapolis Raceway. the brick at, at the finish line there. That is so stinking cool. And we are the only sunglass company in the world that can do that. We gotta take these off and we gotta throw these bad boys on. I mean, I feel James <laughs> Dean already. These are nice. Yeah. Wow. They are. This, this is a, a huge step up from uh, even my Maui gyms, right? That's exactly. These are. That's pretty cool. Now, didn't Elvis actually wear these sunglasses? Yes, there's a story on our website. When he was in Ocala in 1961, he saw somebody in the crowd wearing the sunglasses. So he sent one of his team to try and buy a pair, and they couldn't find them. So he hunted down the guy in the crowd, bought them off him for $100 in 1961. Whew. And the story goes, he wore them for the next two years. So Elvis was one of the original Reynolds sunglass wearers. Oh, that is so cool. So now that brings us to today with the Elvis jet that was behind that door. You haven't seen it yet. Uh, so let's open that door and let you guys see the Elvis jet for the first time. Perfect. All right, so these, uh, these guys have not seen the Elvis jet. Go ahead and turn around and come on in. Oh, marvelous. Oh. I've got a special guest up there ready for it, ready to, to meet you. Yes, I can't wait to have my picture with it. Okay. That is coming over here on this eventually. That's the, well, that's the plan anyway on paper. How it happens in real life is still up for debate. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah. come on in. Yeah, check yes. it out. So what we're doing is we're going to give them a piece of the Elvis jet that has a serial number on it so they can make Elvis limited edition custom sunglasses. And they're going to put the little powder pulverized stuff that they they do in the little corner emblem like they did with the brickyard indianapolis 500 but we got to find the right piece for them to do this let's look around well let me show you on the inside come on in here let's check it out we got elvis he's here to greet you that was sent to us today probably my favorite gift that anybody's ever sent me can i have a picture with him oh of course yeah go over there hey nice <laughs> oh this is superb what a piece of history what do you what do you think? Fabulous. Now, and this is exactly the way it was when I got it. I have not even wiped it down, vacuumed it, nothing. 1983 was the last time this airplane flew. Flew. I love the 70s velour. Oh yeah. Super. You got you got to love your red velvet and gold <laughs> accents. And we just got our uh, cup holders today. Oh. Put those in from BAS and they're sending us all of our missing instruments up front. And they said any other parts that we need, we're gonna, yeah. I think we're gonna have to repair that right there. And they should have a piece for that. Yeah, how cool is that? That's the so TV nice. right there behind the light turned on. There's a VCR by your shoulder in that cabinet. All of it turned on. That is pretty cool. Well, yeah. We gotta get a picture of us on this airplane. Well, yeah, you'll, you'll sit here. Yeah, here, let's, let's do that. Here is the piece that we think is going to be the perfect thing because it's got the serial numbers all over it. 5016, 5016 all the way down. And it's the main rear tail support with all those bolts and everything. That's going to be a fantastic piece. And it's very well documented and has the airplane serial number on it as well. I think that's going to make some fantastic sunglasses. Woo!